words. Now, will Kamala Harris ever be forced to address the media and answer any kind of tough question at all? Joining me now is Mark Simone, WOR radio host, and Joe Concha, Fox News contributor and author of Progressively Worse. There is the picture of the book. Looks nice. Thank you, David. Another one. You Why keep churning is... these things out. Yes. All right, Mark, uh, let me play a, a, a montage, as we say, from, from the Democratic National Convention of various uh, Democrat congressmen and others uh, with, with specifics or t talking about not really having a need to get into specifics with Kamala. Roll tape. I haven't heard from many voters looking for white papers and policy papers. What they want to hear is what her vision is for this country. The American people don't vote on policy prescriptions. I actually think the way the American people think about this choice is less about the minutia of policy and more about the direction of the country. Isn't that insulting to American <laughs> voters, Mark? This is the great... I, I can't wait to see how this works out. The media, the Dems colluding on the... This will be the greatest hoax ever pulled off. A blank candidate, an empty suit, no policies, no positions. How hard is it to go on a TV show and answer questions? We're doing it right now. It's easy. It's not hard. If they can pull this off, it, first of all, it would be the most frightening thing in the world. Yeah. But uh, I just got to believe in the American public and that this all will blow up in their face. So voters, they just don't need any specifics about how their <laughs> lives might be changed fundamentally by the next president. When I heard that, David, I went back to Nancy Pelosi, where she said, we have to pass the bill in order to find out what's That's in right. it. Remember That's that? Remember that? Right, of course. Uh, during the Democratic National Convention, Donald Trump's name was brought up 160 times on night one. It was brought up nearly 160 times on nights two and three combined. And on night four, Kamala Harris's speech, David, she broached Donald Trump 15 times. You know what word she didn't bring up once during her 37-minute speech? Inflation. At last chance. Or Af Afghanistan. Or That's Afghanistan, for that matter. And what happened, by the way, to price fixing and controlling price gouging? That economic proposal that came out 10 days ago has vanished. Well, not entirely. We just played, I, I don't think you heard, but okay. we just played a soundbite from Gene Sperling, uh -huh. who I think is one of the people who came up with the idea on Thursday on Fox, yeah. and he was doubling down on it. So apparently he's the part of the, uh, the team that wrote it, so yeah. no wonder he wants to defend it. But, but Kamala Harris hasn't talked about it in any no, way, shape, or form. No, she hasn't. She and hasn't. to Mark's point, how hard is it to prepare for an interview with The View? or Rachel Maddow, or Gail King, or pick anyone on CNN. Uh, that's the thing. The fact that she thinks she could Ron Burgundy her way all the way to the White House. Ron Burgundy, remember, or, or whatever Biden you put in teleprompter, I mean, Burgundy will read. Remember, Biden, had, Biden wouldn't even talk to, have a Super Bowl interview, you know, which is one of the mo most softball interviews you can get as a president. Yeah, but even in his basement days, you forget, Biden did interviews every day. They weren't long. They were 10 minutes here and there. But he did it every day. I, I think one of the reasons she didn't want to talk about policy, she would have to get some to talk about it. <laughs> I, I don't do interviews on physics because I don't know anything. And yeah. I think that's why she doesn't talk about policy. Oh, I wish I could interview her. But while Gene <laughs> Sperling is trying to defend price controls, you're, I think you're absolutely right about the media. I think the media, because remember, C CNN was against it. Uh, Washington Post, New, New York, York Times. Times mm -hmm. they, the media did come out against it because they knew it's, you know, they can read history. They know it's failure. But I have a feeling they got a phone call from some of their buddies in the in the White House saying, hey, guys, lay off. You know, we're, we'll talk about it eventually. But right now, lay off. Yeah. So it, it is now incumbent upon Donald Trump during that debate on September 10th to bring it up. So you're for price fixing. You think the government should cap prices in supermarkets, for example, where they have, what, one, two percent profit margins? Explain further why you think that's a good idea. If I'm Trump, I ask Kamala Harris the questions. I don't depend on the moderators and let her try to explain something without that teleprompter, without prescripted remarks. I want to hear how she's going to end fossil fuels, which she said she was going to do, end all offshore billing, abolish ICE. You support sanctuary cities. Right. You're against border wall construction. You're against Remain in Mexico. You want free health care for illegals. How's that going to work? Oh, you said you want to end the private health insurance industry. How's that going to work? Oh, you want to raise taxes. How high? But you think it's 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 the, pre the former president himself has got to ask the questions because you can't rely on the moderator for that. Give his position in 20 seconds, which he can do, and then yield the rest of your time to Kamala Harris to explain her position. Put the focus on her, just like it happened on June 27th with Joe Biden. N the more she talks, the more it's a human Chernobyl that we're witnessing because she doesn't have the ability to speak expertly. By the way, what are, you like guys, me and you? what are you guys hearing about the debate? I mean, with all these, there, there are questions now about whether it's going to go on. Will we see the debate on September 10th? Uh, probably. I, I assume from Trump this is a lot of negotiating, and he, he's brilliant at it. He went, he went with everything they threw at him for the first debate with Biden, though. He didn't—there was nothing—I mean, some of it, 
his team found objectionable, but they went ahead and did it anyway. Yeah, I think originally they were supposed to be seated. He got it back to standing. Yes. There'll be something here he wants to change. He wants to make sure Stephanopoulos is nowhere near this. He's, He's currently not. suing him, so that should be enough. So Ste those. there is a lawsuit current currently. between Stephanopoulos, so it would be clear conflict of interest if he was the moderator, if Steph Stephanopoulos Which was the never moderate. affected ABC before. Yeah, right, right. Why well, should it bother? So we used to leave it up to, to the League of Women Voters, for those who don't remember. They were the ones who were going to set the parameters of the debate. They did a fairly good job. I mean, you could criticize them one way or the other. Maybe they had a bias sometimes. But the fact is, they, they did a good job, and they took it out of the hands of both candidates and the media specific. Should we go back to something like that? Where Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, this, this shouldn't be something that's negotiated. Like, here are the rules, right? And, and, and that's the end of it. And, and Trump, I think it would be a good idea to have his mic muted again, because Kamala Harris, you remember her debate with Mike Pence, her big line was, Excuse me, I'm speaking. I'm That's speaking. Right. So no, if you can't cut her off, that line goes away. But you're right about the media, boy. I mean, we saw today, for example, the Washington Post actually put out a story saying that Doug Emhoff, the uh, husband of Kamala Harris, is the modern day sex symbol. Quote, move over <laughs> Ryan Gosling, unquote. If you just want a little flavor of what we're seeing. Wow. I mean, I, you could say a lot of things about him, but I, I he never thought. He impregnated the nanny, David. Yeah, he went full Schwarzenegger. Yeah. Oh, yeah, Come yeah, on. Yeah, yeah. So that makes him a, a, a star in their eyes. I have no words. Oh, I'm supposed God. to come on here and talk. I don't even... Mark, I'm one of the problems that Trump speech. is going to face, he, he could make charges and make statements about... Uh, about Joe Biden, even even when he did with Hillary Clinton, that he may not be able to get away with and deal with Kamala. She's she's made victimhood a part of her her political life for her entire political life. It's been one of the reasons a lot of people said she succeeded. If he tries anything that you know she's going to cry victimhood uh, that you know is either race based or are uh, misogynistic or whatever. He's, he's got to be careful here in the debate. Yeah, I think he knows that. He was careful with a very feeble Joe Biden in the last debate. Tulsi Gabbard wiped out Kamala in a debate. She's helping him. If uh, Kamala Harris was smart, she would negotiate to get the mic muted when she's on. That would probably be the mm -hmm. best thing for her. <laughs> <laughs> right. By the way, Jake Tapper... And Dana Bash got high praise from Donald Trump for the for the first debate. So I guess that questions. rules out uh, them for any future I, debate. I think at that time they were trying to hurt Biden. They were trying to get Biden out of the race. They were gotcha. trying to help that effort. Got gotcha. you, got gotcha. you, gentlemen. Great to see you. What Thank you very much. Thanks.